What's up guys, now in today's video we're going to be showing you how to stop that awful GPU sag and we're going to be doing it properly. We're not going to be showing you how to jab a screw into the back of your case or something like a few people out there would actually recommend. We're actually going to be doing it with these wonderful things. So for those of you that don't know what GPU sag is, it's effectively when your graphics card is sitting inside your system and the sheer weight of the thing actually pulls a graphics card down like that. Now, a lot of people out there do actually say that it is a problem with cases themselves, but we've never had this issue before, particularly in the older generations. It's actually down to the sheer size of graphics cards nowadays. We never used to get the problem with anything like FE models. In actual fact, I've never actually experienced the problem with an FE or reference model graphics card. I've never done it with the 10 series from Nvidia, never had it with the Intel Arcs. They're very nice, solid graphics cards and they seem to hold up quite well and I've never even experienced with anything like the high-end 7000 series from AMD. This is an AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT. It is a reference model from Paracolor and these things are built like tanks. It's so solid that you get absolutely zero GPU sag with them at all and a lot of that is down to the actual size of the graphics cards as well as the way they're constructed. I tend to find that you get a lot of issues with graphics cards like this one. This is an AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT. It is the Strix model and it is just completely well over engineered. It is so heavy and it's actually where the way it's designed just isn't very good particularly when you're inserting it into a PC there is a lot of weight on the back here and the card seems to sag. You do tend to see it a lot on these overly engineered and large AIB cards. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to see how we can actually stop a bit of sag from here using a proper method and to do that we've got all of these things here. Now there are many different types of anti-GPU sag kind of brackets braces mounts things like that but we're going to need a test system to actually show you how to install them and what they actually do now for our demonstration today we'll be using this system this is actually the system we use for our benchmarking and it is inside the antec performance ft1 case it's actually a very large case and you can fit pretty much any graphics card you want in here even the ones that do have a lot of sag on them we've installed the amd radeon rx 6700 xt and as you can see we do have a little bit of sag here. If you just lift the graphics card up here, you can see that it starts to actually kind of flatten out a little bit and stop sagging in the corner. But once you let go, the sheer weight of the card actually pulls down on the system. It is pulling here at the PCI Express slot and we have mounted it in the back correctly here with the two screws. We also have a slight lean forward on this card because of the sheer weight of it. So if we actually just lift the whole card up, we can see that it will go up and down. It's not the worst card out there for GPU sag. I don't like this kind of thing because I can actually feel the pressure on the motherboard when you do that. But there are some that actually come all the way down here and it's just not nice at all. Now the first thing that we're going to look at to try and resolve this issue is actually one of these. This is a very basic GPU support. It is basically an extendable stick. It's on a, it's got a little thread that when you spin this it goes up and down and then you have a little lock off collar and the principle is very easy on these. All you have to do is kind of just locate it under your graphics card push the little thing under there. It does have a rubber pad on the top. It's best to look for ones like that because then you're not going to scratch your graphics card. And it has a little sticky pad on the bottom. So hopefully once it's installed and you've stuck that down to your case, it won't be going anywhere. Once you've actually installed it, all you need to do then is just rotate it up until the graphics card becomes level and then rotate the little collar down and lock it into place. Like I say, that is the most basic form of GPU support and they work exceptionally well. I've actually used this one in systems before. Uh, particularly older graphics cards that are really super heavy and it kind of blends into the system a little bit although it can actually get in the way of your cabling sometimes and trying to actually navigate it around not squashing a fan can also be a little bit awkward sometimes but it is a very basic method to resolve this issue. If the little support leg isn't for you maybe it's a little bit too basic or you want something a little bit more flashy you can actually get things like this. These are exactly the same principle here. It's a stand that will go in your case. Sometimes have a little sticky pad on the bottom. This one's got rubber, so it shouldn't move around. And it's got a little adjustable stand here where you can undo the screw, lift it up and down, and it will actually give you the ability to lift your graphics card up and down. This one also comes with RGB lighting in it, so you can add a little bit of flair to the system. And sometimes you can actually get these that actually hide the cables. You can put them in front of where the cable is, and it will actually hide your cables away, so they can look quite nice too. But again, it's a very simple process on these. All you do is undo the screw here, lower the actual stand down, mount it underneath your graphics card. This one just goes around the edge and then you raise the bracket up until the graphics card's level and you tie off the little tag. That should actually then keep your graphics card still. 
and because of the weight of the graphics card on it with the rubber pad down below it shouldn't actually move anywhere and it can look quite nice if you have RGB hooked up. There are more advanced versions of these of course this is just a no brand kind of thing you can get them in all different types of brands you can get nice little clear ones ones that project light in you can get lots of stuff like that but a long time ago a company actually sent me one of these this is exactly the same principle as this stand here but it comes with some actual fans in it to help even cool your graphics card. Now, instead of actually mounting one of these, this is called the Pole 1, by the way, you don't actually mount it at the front here. I suppose you could do if you really wanted to, but they are actually generally designed to go at the back here. And then the fans on the system will actually provide cool air into your kind of graphics card area and as well as cooling some of the motherboard as well. This one as well comes with a twin kind of setup here, which means you can actually install it if you've got something running SLI. Nobody really runs that anymore, but if you do, you can actually have twin graphics cards here actually mounted on to this to stop sagging of both or you can actually crimp it down on your graphics card and then it'll grip your graphics card so it can't bounce up and down they actually look quite nice in the system i don't actually have a black one i've only got a white one at the moment but if you do manage to get a black one they will kind of fit up the front there and it's got nice RGB lighting on the side as well. So this kind of thing could look pretty good in your system too. That is a little bit more advanced because of course you've got extra cabling here. You've got to power the fans. You've also got to power the lighting. So maybe it's not the option for everybody, but it's nice to know that these kind of things exist as well. Another option, if you don't like the actual support stand here, or maybe you have a case where you've got fans on the bottom and you can't actually have a little support leg, is of course the support brace. A lot of manufacturers actually provide these types of things with their graphics cards nowadays. So that's actually pretty good if you can get hold of one of them. My 6700 XT didn't actually come with one, although the box does have a space for what I think was one of them, but I bought it secondhand, so maybe they kept it. But I have bought graphics cards in the past, definitely from MSI, some of their bigger versions, where you get a nice little MSI brace. But the actual one that I've got here today is from Cooler Master, and it is the ELV8. We have used these previously on the channel, and to be honest, I think they're pretty cool. If I just open that up there, we can have a look at what you actually get. Now, this is an ARGB bracket as well but it is technically classified as a brace we've got a cable here for our ARGB you can get these without ARGB if you just want something plain and effectively they don't mount onto the bottom of your case there they actually mount into your PCI slots what you'll need to do is remove three screws from the back insert in put the screws back in and it will sit under your graphics card like that then once it's actually fit under your graphics card you can undo this little screw at the bottom that will allow for this little bracket on the back here to go up and down as well as sliding back and forward so you can actually once it's mounted adjust your brackets where you need to lift your graphics card up and just lock it off to the front there and it should keep your graphics card nice and stable in the case now i have had issues with similar things like this in the past particularly cheaper brands one issue in particular is that depending on how they've actually created this bracket here if it doesn't have all three holes you tend to get the fact that they sag themselves that is a little bit annoying considering that you've bought an anti-sag bracket that now sags also you can get issues when sometimes if you mount them to the back they actually go back and forward like that and they can go into your fans so you need to make sure that you actually tie this off correctly it is a nice little plastic on the end so it shouldn't move around too much but i have actually seen people install these and accidentally move this little bracket into their fans then the graphics card starts overheating they don't know what's going on and it turns out it's just because one fan is stuck and it can't be going around so you do need to be careful when mounting these kind of things but they can look very nice in the case now the final option for resolving any kind of gpu sag is of course mounting the GPU a different way and you can do that by mounting it vertically with some kind of bracket. A lot of cases will actually come with PCI Express slots that actually are vertical in the front here so you can actually vertically mount a GPU in there but sometimes they only offer two slots and a lot of cards nowadays particularly large ones where you do want to resolve this problem come with three slot cards so they won't actually fit there. A lot of high-end premium cases will come with three slots and you're perfectly fine to be able to use that. You will need a PCIe riser cable still to be able to actually connect the graphics card up. But then again, I do tend to find that those cases always have them mounted in the wrong place. They tend to be at the front of the case here, which means that your graphics card is then sucking the glass panel and that's not good for any kind of airflow. So a lot of companies actually came out with things like this. Now this is a vertical mount bracket from Fantex. It's probably one of the most common brackets out there. It does only use a PCI Gen 3 cable, so you will need the more up-to-date version for modern graphics cards. And it simply goes into the case by mounting into the back panel of here. Now different version of these brackets will actually require different kind of fitting instructions. We have another one here from Cooler Master. It is also still 
still just a PCI Gen 3, but it's a little bit more advanced than the one from Fantex. Both stands actually look very similar in kind of nature, but the Cooler Master one does have these extra screws on the top here, so you can adjust your graphics card back and forward, just like this. That means you can actually get your graphics cards being stored further into the system if that's where you like to place it, particularly if you have kind of weird size graphics cards. But again, both of these actual units do only come with a dual slot kind of configuration. And they also install into the back of the case by removing all of your PCI Express kind of ports. Now, if you do have a case that doesn't have the ability to remove all of these ports, particularly the little bars that go in between, you will have to do some kind of modification or buy a new case. I have done videos in the past where we actually cut those little bars out and it works pretty well to be honest it's just effectively doing the same as what you've got in if you can remove them to be honest there's no real kind of downfall to it the system was just as strong afterwards and it looked pretty cool too now you're probably only going to get that issue if you are actually fitting or mounting into a budget case so you probably won't worry too much anyway but effectively all you need to do is remove all of these little pci express card things the little blanks that you have in the case very often taking up all of the slots you will need to install your graphics card onto the stand first and it's a very simple process once you've actually got it out of the system you can just basically hook it in just like that slot it into your pci express port and then you'll want to actually tie the graphics card down you can use the original screws just like you did on the case these will actually just mount into the bracket itself like that this fantex one actually comes with its own screws these are little captive things on the back here so you can't get them out they won't you won't lose them anywhere or anything like that whereas the cooler master one doesn't you actually have to reuse the screws from the system originally so be aware of that depending on which one you buy sometimes cases have the little pull out cards so you will need to make sure that you've got screws for this if you're going to be doing this but then again you should have them anyway if you are fitting a graphics card in because you'll need a couple of them once the graphics cards actually fit to the stand like that what you generally do is you insert it into the case install your pci express card into the motherboard and then as if you are mounting a graphics card into all of the slots you will slot the actual bracket itself into the back and then it should line up with the ports on the back there so that you can actually screw them in. Now I'm not going to screw all of them in here, but we'll try and locate one just so that we can get it nice and secure. And then as you can see, the graphics card is actually mounted this way. That means that the graphics card can't really sag this way at all because it's actually mounted up to the back here. It's supported at the back. It's also supported underneath because a lot of these brackets do come with extra pads underneath and because they're actually mounted at the front there against your pci express kind of ports where you actually install your graphics card you can actually have them float in a system so if you do have one with the fans at the bottom it won't actually touch the fans it'll float kind of above them and that's pretty much now taken all of the kind of pressure off the motherboard off the pci express slot as well as the graphics card itself and of course these graphics cards are super expensive nowadays and we don't want to get them damaged this is probably the most effective way of actually reducing gpu you sag and it can make your system look fantastic as well i tend to opt for the vertically mounting just because i like the way it looks and because if you do use one of these brackets you've now got a pretty decent gap between the glass panel and your graphics card itself considering those big fans at the front are going to be forcing air all the way down the system going to get plenty of airflow and it's going to look really nice doing it now those are all the methods of being able to actually reduce your gpu sag of course the best method is probably not buying a graphics card that will sag in the first place but we can't always avoid that i tend to use in my home systems fe or reference cards and like i said previously I've never actually had an issue with any of them. I think they make them nice and compact and super strong. It tends to be just these oversized AIB cards. But of course, if you are buying one of them, you're probably going for something because of the way it looks or the additional performance they give you. So this is going to be an option or any of these will be an option for you to be able to resolve this kind of issue. Let me know in the comments below if you actually have any GPU sag on your GPU and how did you resolve it? Did you use one of these mechanisms or did you actually build something yourself out of maybe Lego bricks? I've seen that done before. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content we've got plenty of guides and things coming in the future so you won't want to miss them and i'm sure as always we'll catch you guys in the next one